Hey everyone! Since a lot of people have been asking about this, I'd like to give you a little peek behind the curtain on my Conquest Let's Play. What we have here is Chapter 19 in my planning file. As of this recording, that's 13 maps ahead of my most recent episode, and 9 maps ahead of my actual LP save file. I'm showing you this to give you some insight into my process. However, I don't want to spoil too many of my ideas before you get to see them develop in the campaign, so what I'm presenting now does not exactly match everything I'm hoping to do in the future. When I'm imagining how to approach a chapter like this, I'm usually going to start by looking at ways that I might simplify the map. In the LP, the challenge is to train a bunch of units even when they're underleveled and underpowered, so I have to find ways to help them succeed. Usually, the best way to achieve that is to bring a couple of key units who can clear out a large number of enemies very quickly. That way, I can figure out setups to feed the weaklings that will be easier, cheaper, and more consistent. On this particular map, two of my key units are going to be Corrin and Silas. Corrin has Heartseeker, and he gets a hit bonus from Gunter's personal skill, giving him 35 additional points of accuracy. A huge help when facing enemies who are walking around with 66 avoid or more. With only a Bronze Axe plus one, Corrin's attack power is not too impressive, but the kill thresholds for this particular group of Kitsune are pretty low because they all have life and death. Silas has become a Wyvern Lord, and he's carrying a Beast Killer. With Elbow Room, Defender, and the meal I cooked up, two points each for Strength, Skill, and Defense, his attack power against Kitsune using the Beast Killer is 59. That happens to be the exact kill threshold for the bulkiest enemies in this whole chapter, the Beast Room Ninetales. So this is what I'm starting with. With nothing but a meal, some pair-up partners, and a couple of utility units in Felicia and Azura, let's see what we can do. First, we'll put Corn in range of some of the life and death enemies. His defense stat is good, but it's not amazing, so we have to be a bit conservative about this. The three nearest foxes, other than the really weak one by our starting position, have attack power of 36, 42, and 48 against Corn's 29 defense. That's 7 plus 13 plus 19 damage, or 39 total. Not a survivable amount, unless we put Felicia nearby. Silas can handle double duty. He can drop Felicia into an appropriate position, and then after Azura sinks to him, he can fly off with Kaze to kill some Ninetales, starting with the ones who are paired up. You're not alone. At this position, Silas is not only on a plane tile, but surrounded by planes, so the enemies can't use terrain against him here. Still, his hit rates are not the best. No hard feelings. Show me what you've got. Unacceptable. We made it. Looks like we have no choice. Finally! Yes. Let's go. Don't scare me like that. We made it! Corrin also sees some imperfect hit rates, although his are still much better than Silas's. Guess I did it right. I am at your service. It turns out that Silas reaches the survival threshold exactly, so we don't have to give him any more help in terms of HP or defense. And Corrin hits this kill threshold exactly. Now that's the kind of thing that we can't rely on, because Corrin's growths might be a little bit lower in the end, so we probably want to investigate ways to bring his strength stat up just in case. Allow me to join you. You're lucky I'm here. Yeah. 
That's it for turn one, but I think this is a pretty reasonable start. We've taken care of an entire group of pretty dangerous Ninetales up north. Corrin chewed through two enemies, and with enough extra strength, he could have killed this next Ninetales as well. And then the rest of the foxes here would be pretty easy pickings for the rest of our army, if we were deploying a full team. So let's go back, make some modifications, and see what we can improve. For a second attempt, we know that we'd like to improve our accuracy, and we also want to give Korn at least three more points of attack so we can kill that second Ninetales. For that matter, since Silas hit his kill threshold exactly, it wouldn't hurt to give him a boost too. Then we wouldn't have to rely on his strength growth quite as much. We can address those problems using tonics, but it's cheaper to use rallies if they're available. So in this second run, we're bringing Charlotte for rally strength, and Soleil for rally skill. Let's go. I have faith in you. Trust me. You're not alone. Already we can see that our hit rates are significantly improved. They're six points higher now thanks to Rally Skill. I like the way this strategy is shaping up, but of course, in the LP, I'm supposed to train everyone. I can't just let loose a pair of super units to take all the kills. So let's add another element to the mix. Here we have Benny. He's a little behind the level curve and he needs some additional training to catch up. Xander is here to help carry Benny around. Now I'm happy with the idea of sending Silas up by himself to kill the northeastern pack of foxes, but he needs the beast killer for that, and there's only one of those. If Silas has it, then Benny won't. I could try to have Benny take Silas's place, but I wouldn't be thrilled to put my low movement armor unit in the corner, far away from everyone else. So where can Benny get his kills without the beast killer? Well, the obvious choice is to have him fight the life and death Kitsune. If I put Benny in a spot where he won't take too many hits, and I support him with dual strikes so that he kills with his counterattacks, he should do pretty well. One candidate position for Benny is the place where Korn has been, in range of one Kitsune and two Ninetales. Korn can go next to Benny to supply the dual strikes he needs, and that has the additional benefit of improving Benny's damage and survivability thanks to supportive. There are just two problems with this plan. One is that Benny is a little bit short of the survival threshold, even with Felicia and Corrin nearby. But I've gone ahead and fixed that by giving Benny an HP tonic. Not a defense tonic, because I don't want Benny to have more defense than Corrin does. The second issue is that if Benny is not paired up, he'll be vulnerable to dual strikes from two of the Kitsune who can't reach him. So we must prevent those dual strikes by giving those Kitsune someone else to hit, someone who can eliminate them on the counterattack. If Corrin waits right above Benny, Inside their range, he can do that. With the tonic and with corn placed in the right spot, this tactic should work. Let's try it out and see where we stand. Let me help you. Let's do this as a team. Here I am. So we're going to put corn one space farther up than he used to be. Everything. Xander drops Benny right next to him. 
Silas drops Felicia to cover all three of these people. How troubling. And Azura does the refreshing. On my honor as a knight. So Korn's picking off the two uh, life and death kitsune that were beyond Benny's range as intended. And that should mean that there are no dual strikes against Benny. Now, Korn has to hit this dual strike, and his accuracy is not ideal. Uh, he benefits from Benny's Fierce Mien, but he doesn't get to use Heartseeker or Gunter's personal bonus. Uh, so he's missing out on 35 points of accuracy there. Is this acceptable accuracy? Maybe. It is the first turn, so it's pretty easy to reset and try again if anything goes wrong. Still, with further revisions, we might want to improve this if we can. It might even be worthwhile to buy skill and luck times. Now we're down to only three enemies here, and we actually do have the firepower to mop them up really quickly, even using some of our other units besides Corrin, Silas, and Benny. For example, we can have Soleil and Charlotte team up to take down this Kitsune. We'll be fine. We can have Corrin ship this one first and get protected by his dual guard. Watch your back, It's not your time yet. And we can bring back Silas to get another kill and gain another level. Now Benny reaches level 20 and he's ready to promote. So that's a pretty good start. I have complete control of the right side of the map, which will make it a lot easier to break down the remaining enemy formations. And of course, in a real attempt at this chapter, I can deploy more units to help out, and I may be able to find other enhancements for this basic strategy. Speaking of deploying more people, I'm trying to match my units with maps where they might actually be useful. This is a place where Benny is appropriate and Nyx is not. I have to keep that kind of thing in mind when working out how to accomplish my training and support goals. Anyway, I hope this has been an interesting or even a useful demonstration. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments.